Hello party people, what seems to be happening with you today? I hope everybody's feeling beautiful, um, I know I am. Today we're going to be having a look at Polysynth, which is a deceptively complicated little guy which is used to make subtractive synthesis sounds. It's actually capable of quite a lot. I don't use it as much as a lot of the other stuff and uh, in preparation for this tutorial I kind of started to wonder why I don't use it that much because it's actually really good. Anyway what we're going to do is have a quick look through it and then I'm going to give you some tips as to stuff you can do to uh, make cool stuff. I've got some sound examples here. Um, this is me from the future. I keep forgetting to say it to like the video and um, it does make a difference whether I say that or not so if you could do that if you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, we're just going to have a quick look at it and uh, get everybody up to speed. So um, you've got a few different sections here in Polysynth. You've got obviously your modulator sections where your modulators go in. We'll have a little look at that in a while. Um, you've got your uh, oscillator section here where you've got two oscillators, um, which each also have a sub. So you kind of have four oscillators. Uh, then you've got this section here, which is... Um, like the mixer master section. Um, you've got different ways of mixing the oscillators and having them sort of modulate each other. And uh, you've got a mixer here between oscillator one and two. Um, you've got a noise level. You have a uh, uh, oscillator FM, but we'll go into all that. There's a little section down here where you can, um, you've kind of got another little utility filter, master pitch, stuff like that. And then you've got your filter section over here. Um, and the envelope for the filter and the envelope for the volume um so the master envelope then you've got your little output section here where you've got velocity control and you can pan and stuff like that but we'll have a look in more detail now in a second another thing to notice with polysynth is you can pop out like a little bigger screen view and you've got access to some of the controls in here as well um, and it also shows you sort of various stages of the processing of the oscillators as well as your two envelopes Which are the same as the ones that are down here So we'll go through every section in a bit more detail now So starting with the oscillator section you've got a sort of a view here of what your oscillator looks like so if you change the shape of it You get that's gonna be represented here and up here um, You've got a pitch This will allow you go plus and minus seven semitones and that's individual per oscillator. So you've got one here and one here, and they independently affect each oscillator. Then you've got your, um, this eight here. This is your control for your octave. So up and down, I think one, two, up and down, two, three octaves. Yeah, so it goes three octaves up and down. And uh, that's on both oscillators as well. They're identical. And then you've got your shape control. This will move between a square wave a saw wave in the middle and a saw wave an octave up that you can also pulse width modulate so you can sort of blend easily between those just to show you this pulse width control here if you're on a, saw, a regular saw wave in the middle that's going to have no effect this is uh this is the pulse width control by the way if you're on a square wave it's going to pulse with the square wave as you would expect so you can modulate the pulse width and then if you're on the second octave up saw wave, you can uh, sort of pulse with the, I guess, second octave of the saw. So, so this is only going to have an effect um, really in these two areas. And then obviously any mix in between will work as well. So um, the other control that you have here is a sub. This will allow you to bring in a square wave, an octave down. And then you mix that in. So if you put this to 100%, all you're hearing is the sub. And if you um, if you have it at 0%, you're not hearing it at all. And it also deactivates this pulse width for the sub. Um, so we will mix it in 50% here. So now you're hearing 50% sub and 50% regular oscillator. And then you've got a pulse width control down here, which just affects the sub. It doesn't affect the um, the regular oscillator that's still controlled here. Now, the next thing you have is a sync control. It's a regular sync control, um, like you'd see in pretty much any subtractive synth. Make your Daft Punk leads and stuff like that. 
you can do that with your sync control so under the sync then you've got a retrigger control this will retrigger the oscillators phase every time you hit the key so it'll start at the exact same phase otherwise it will jump around in phase randomly uh, that will have an important impact on unison as well so the next section we have here is the unison section um, if we uh, increase the voices here we can go up to 16 voices or anywhere up down and in between um, you um, if you activate this retrigger control the unison is going to sound completely different because no longer the unison voices happen at random phases the unison voices are all happening at the same phase So those are dramatically different sounds. Then you've got um, the uh, width control here. This will control the serial width of the unison. So you can spread the pitches with this unison knob here. But if we've got the uh, stereo set here to zero, there's gonna be no stereo. And then if we bring it up, we've got lots of stereo. And uh, that's basically it for the unison part. And then you've got a pan for the oscillator, which will pan the oscillator left and right. Um, this pan control is individual for each oscillator, so you can put an oscillator one right and the other one left, if you so choose. Um, the All the stuff on oscillator two is exactly the same. It's just a, basically a complete copy of oscillator one. Now, into the next section. Um, what you've got here are some mixing modes for the oscillators. Um, some will mix the oscillators together, some will impart characteristics from one oscillator onto the other, and some will modulate one oscillator by another oscillator. Um, so we can come in and have a quick look in the help menu at what it says about these. Um, there's a pretty good description of what they do, but it's hard to know how these things will sound until you sort of look at them yourself. So. We'll have a read through them and then I'll kind of show you an example of what they actually do. So first and foremost, you've got mix. Uh, mix is just gonna mix oscillator one and oscillator two together. So there's oscillator two, there's oscillator one, and then in the middle, we have 50% of oscillator one, 50% of oscillator two. Negative um, is basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna mix the two oscillators together, but it's gonna flip the polarity of oscillator two. Um, this can be useful for some things. The easiest way to show you what this is doing is if I set both of these oscillators to re-trigger, okay, then I set it to negative here, and then I set them to the same shape, so a square or a saw wave, and then I set them to the same pitch. Um, if I have negative on, when I hit a note in the middle, there's gonna be no sound. Because as you can see, the oscillators are directly mirrored of each other. So they're the opposite phase. So when you're in the middle, because they're the opposite phase, they're basically canceling each other out. So the next one we've got here is wipe. Wipe is a logarithmic mix of oscillator one and two. This is just another way of mixing the oscillators together. I'm gonna to explain more um, of these like mathematical things when I go into the uh, some more grid tutorials um, because they're kind of easier to explain in there um, and I'll probably use modulators first and then move into oscillators after. I think it's probably an easier way to understand it. But basically, wipe is just um, another way of mixing the two oscillators together. Then you've got AM. So AM is amplitude modulation. So we're modulating oscillator one by oscillator two and that's amplitude modulation. So if we have these as different shapes here and then change the pitch, you can see we're getting a really complicated modulated shape. So you can basically use that to create more complex sort of amplitude modulation type shapes. Now the next one we've got here is uh, sine. Sine is oscillator one and two with oscillator one's polarity. So the easiest way to show this is, let me just uh, return to the default preset here for polysynth. So if I go to oscillator two, 
All we're hearing now is oscillator 2. And if we go to sine, and let's go and change this to this uh, modulated square wave here. So now, as you can hear, even though we're only here in oscillator 2, the changes that we're making to oscillator 1 are making changes in the phase to oscillator 2. So if you look at the shape up here, this is the mix of the two. Let me just change some sentence here. So again, it's not important really to understand exactly what this stuff is doing. Um, if you don't understand like phase and stuff like that, that's fine. The best thing to do is just play around with them and see what kind of oscillator shapes you can make. So the next one here is max. Um, max is oscillator one and the max of oscillator one and two. This is another one that kind of um, is more of uh, the one oscillator affecting another than just mixing them together. Um, if you don't really understand that, that's fine. Just play around with it. So you can see if we just go to oscillator two here, any kind of changes we make. Are going to affect the other one. So it's just worth playing around with those different modes. And seeing what kind of oscillator shapes you can make with them. Then we've got filter FM. Which I'll talk about in a second. When we're talking about the filter. And uh, we have sort of a, a pre-filter here. Which will give us um, a couple of high pass filters if we need them. And then you've got a resonance for that. Then you've got a pre-filter drive here as well. So the pre-filter drive is just going to basically drive into the filter. Basically, we'll distort the signal a bit. We'll have a look at how that sounds different when we're looking at the filter section as well. So you've got a master pitch here. Uh, the master pitch is a pitch control for both oscillators at the same time, as opposed to being controlled individually over here. Then you've got a glide, which will glide between notes. And if you hit this little L button here, that's legato, which means that it will only glide between the notes if you're holding them at the same time. Then you've got a feedback, which is going to feedback before the filter. Um, we'll have a look at this now in conjunction with the filters. The The filter section over here is quite simple. Um, you At the moment, I've got a bypass. That's what this last option is, which will just pretend the filter section isn't there. Then you've got a low pass here, which is a two pole low pass, I believe. So that's just your regular low pass filter with a resonance here. Then you've got a four pole, which is just basically a uh, a more intense low pass with a, with a steeper cutoff. So this is a good opportunity to look at what that filter FM does. So that's going to take our oscillators and uh, it's basically going to use them to modulate the filter cutoff at audio rate. So. So we can hear here, if we change the pitch of our oscillators, it's going to dramatically change. So let's just listen to oscillator one here. And let's change the pitch. And let's take that filter FM off as well. So you can hear it's much more resonant without the filter FM. And then when you bring the filter FM in, it sort of has the effect of roughing it up a bit. So and that's the filter FM. Then you've got the filter drive. So let's just pause. Let's do the same thing here. Uh, let's just have a little bit of resonance on the slow pass filter. And let's drive into it and hear how it sounds different. Just sort of gives it a more sort of smudgy analog sort of character if you drive into it like that. So uh, then you've got the feedback. So let's pull the drive back a bit and let's hear the feedback as well. So so that's with the feedback and then without. Let's pull that drive down just so you can just hear the feedback. So you can hear it's really resonant now. And then let's push the feedback in. So 
So it's just going to give it a bit more sort of of a rough distortion. So you can get quite a lot of character out of the polysynth filter. Um, with these few controls, you can make it kind of really distorted. And um, that's just before the filter. So now there is some stuff we can do after the filter. Just before we have a look at that, um, the other filters here are there's a bandpass. There's a bandpass four pole, which is just a steeper bandpass. There's a high pass filter, which is like what we have over here. Then a four pole. So you can see here again, with that filter feedback turned on, it's a much grittier kind of sound that you get. This is a notch filter then. Notch filter basically just cuts out one frequency and you can move what that frequency is and then once again back to the bypass so um the other controls over here you've got an envelope um a mount this will just send the envelope to the filter so if we make a plug here you can see the amount is controlled by this envelope we can also reverse it So now our decay is acting more like attack. And we've also got like an envelope curve here. So you can make it really snappy. Or sort of a lot looser. So there's one other thing that's in the filter section that kind of comes under the character uh, sort of of the filter I suppose which is this uh, distortion modes so these are distortions that are going after the filter um, I suppose wave shape it's wave shape and more than distortion so these are just a bunch of different distortions that you can put after the filter so you've got everything from soft clip in here uh, to sine wave shaping which is sort of really extreme almost sounds like FM then you've got F emphasis on the second harmonic wave shaping um, so there's a bunch here the best way to to, to go through them uh, things like rectifier and fold is actually quite similar to the sine one um, but the best way to go through these is just to crank up the resonance here and let's pull down the envelope and then turn the drive modes on and we can see post filter here what the drive modes are doing so so you can see that one's really subtle then this sine one it's almost like an fm kind of effect Then we've got this second harmonic. So you can see it's doing a similar kind of wave folding, but it's emphasized on the second harmonic, so it doesn't get as many high frequencies, I suppose. Then you've got this uh, history, I think it's histrionic that stands for. So this is much more of just a sort of chopped distortion. Then there's this rectifier. Uh, rectifying is basically, um, it's pushing parts of the waveform up above the zero crossing. And then we've got this fold. So it's just a different shape of wave folding. So you've got, what is it? One, two, three, four, five, six different options in there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's basically, uh, those are ad used to add character after the filter. Whereas things like your drive and your feedback, they go in before the filter. So you've got a lot of options for changing the way that the filter sounds. Then, as I mentioned before, this is the filter envelope. The filter envelope is represented here. So obviously if it have to have it turned on, it's just a basic envelope. There's nothing too special about it. Um, you can route this anywhere. So if you click this, you can route it to any control you want. Same with the amp envelope. Amp envelope controls the volume of the whole sound. And that's represented here as well. So you can edit it here if you prefer to edit it graphically and see the travel, how it's being traveled through and stuff like that. You can also change the gain. here in this little view. So you may prefer to edit it there, or you may prefer to edit it here. Uh, then you've got a pan for the entire sound instead of just for the oscillators as we've seen earlier. And then you've got a velocity control. This will make it velocity sensitive. You've got an output. 
and then you've got again before your output. And that's all of the controls that exist within Polysynth. So um, now that I've explained sort of all the controls in it, let's look at a couple of sounds um, that I've made with it and a couple of tricks that you can use to get different sounds out of it. So um, the first thing we're gonna look at is just a pad here. So, um, by the way, if you're interested in um, any of the sounds that I've got here and you want to download this project file, if you're a patron of mine, I'll put the project file for this up on my Patreon page so you can download it. Um, the So, a couple of things that are happening here. Um, I think Polysynth especially um, sort of sounds best when you modulate a bunch of stuff in it. So, here what I've got going on is I've got this random modulator. And this random modulator, this is something I like to do in Polysynth a lot because I think that the the default unison sound sounds very uh, sort of static and not that interesting. So one thing I like to do to fix that is I like to take a random modulator and put it on a really slow speed um, and just slightly modulate the pitch of one of the oscillators against the other one. And that kind of has the effect of making it sound a bit more... I guess drifty and analog sounding. Um, I don't think I've got that random modular going anywhere else. I do not. Then I've got uh, this um, LFO here mapped to the uh, pulse width of the second oscillator. Just to give the sound a bit of depth, so it's kind of bringing in some high frequencies and then sort of lowering those high frequencies a bit and giving it that general sort of pulse width modulation sound, which is sort of like a wide kind of a sound, sort of uh, almost sounds like a slight pitch drift as well. Um, I've also got this LFO going to a blur device here where I'm modulating the, um, basically the, the amount of delay in the individual delay lines that are in the blur. I have a full tutorial on blur if you're not familiar with it, by the way, you can go and watch that and that will tell you everything you need to know about it. This is sort of like an, I think it sounds sort of like um, an RC20 effect because it makes it really wobbly. And also um, when you modulate the blur delay lines, they tend to crackle. So it adds like a natural sort of, uh, almost like a vinyl crackle sound. So I'll take that off so you can hear the difference without the blur. So that's without. And here's with. So it makes it really wide and sort of uh, uh, detuned and stuff like that. Then um, I've got an LFO here on the pitch for both oscillators. So this is um, basically just a vibrato essentially. It is actually the vibrato LFO um, and it's basically just coming in over time. And so at the end of the chords, uh, there's like a slight vibrato, which you can hear. Then for processing on that, I've just got a bit of um, a GoTT, which is an OTT knockoff that I made in Bitwig, which you can download. Um, the link is uh, probably in the description if I remember, otherwise it's on my channel. I've got a reverb preset here that I like to use on things. This is like a shimmer reverb that I made. Um, it's like a sort of granular shimmer reverb thing. Um, and uh, that's it. Yeah, that's it for the post processing. And then I'm not gonna go into detail on how I made every single sound here. I'm just gonna pick out maybe a couple of different things that you can uh, do to make it sound more interesting. Here's a lead sort of a sound. So I think Polysynth kind of uh, excels at these like really distorted um, digital distortion kind of sounds. So um, this, I suppose the main thing that's happening in here um, is that I'm using the filter drive here to, or this filter distortion wave shaping mode here to make it really distorted sounding. And the other interesting thing I'm doing is I'm um, frequency modulating the both of the oscillators here with this LFO. So I've got this LFO connected to the master pitch 
And let me just um, turn this down so you can hear the difference. So that's the regular sound. And what's making it kind of jump all over the place, so you can hear that like sometimes it's sort of audio rate um, pitch modulation and sometimes it's just below aud audio rate and sounds more like an LFO, is I've just got this steps and I hit the random button and I attached this to the speed of my LFO here. So you can see I've got my LFO, um, my LFO here is set to pitch of current note. And then I'm sort of, there's an offset here then of the pitch. So you can slow the LFO down or speed it up in relation to the pitch of the note held. And I've got a steps modulator that's basically just modulating that over time. So it gives a kind of an unpredictable pitch quality. Then I've got a bit of distortion on that. Um, this is another reverb preset. I think this is actually the Shimmer one. I think the other one was just a regular reverb. Yeah, it's just a sort of grainy reverb preset that I made um, to make it sound more better. A little bit of GoTT, uh, again, just to make it sound a little bit more modern. And uh, a little bit of EQ, because there was an annoying frequency there that needed to be got rid of. Um, and that's that. The next one here, uh, this is just to show, like, it can do basic stuff quite well as well, like the, you know, your EDM plucks. So you can get really snappy and stuff with the envelope. That's just a basic house pluck sound. Um, again, if you want that, uh, if you want these presets, they're on my Patreon. Um, so the this is just a trans pluck as well, just to show you can do this kind of stuff quite well too. So again, I'm using the, the internal distortion here from the, um, uh, from the filter. And uh, again, it gives it that kind of... In this case, it's kind of more of an analog sort of distortion I'm going for. Again, quite a simple preset there. And uh, this is just a standard Reese as well, just to show you. It can do this standard Reese bass thing quite well. So again, the, the distortion modes are quite good for getting those kind of gritty, sort of basic resounds, but that have that kind of high end and, and grit on them as well. Um, it's actually probably better for that kind of stuff than um, even Polymer is. And then I just wanted to show you the versatility of it if you get a bit sort of funny. Um, so we're not really using traditional, uh, traditional subtractive idea to make some of these sounds, but um, they're cool and they can be done. So here's like a sort of organ sound I made. So what I'm doing here, um, this is a trick I showed off in the phase four video, um, but it's quite a cool one to know. Um, I am using the voice stacking here. Uh, the voice stacking, I have it attached to the filter resonance. So this is maybe a little bit confusing to understand, but the voice stacking, I've got it set to five voices. So that's creating basically five copies of the synth. So I basically get five filters, okay? And then I'm using the the um, voice stacking spread here, which will just spread out whatever parameter I put it on amongst the voices. So if I've got um, five voices and each of them has a filter and it's got a cutoff set at a certain point, it's just going to spread each of those out from each other. So there'll be one in the middle and then there'll be one here and one here and one here and one here. So it's just changing where the cutoff is. <laughs> And if you have it at a high resonance, when you have a high resonance, um, you get sort of like a sine wave kind of a thing. And uh, if you do that, if you spread the pitches apart with the with the voice stacking, then you basically get an organ sound. And I'm not using um, any uh, really outside effects to make this sound, so I'm getting a Leslie effect 
just by modulating the pan of the oscillator here. So you can see I'm modulating the pan with this. And then I'm also modulating this just a little bit, the cutoff just a little bit to sort of change the pitch of the uh, individual drawbars, I guess, or the individual filters. And another thing I'm doing with this voice stack modulator, again, this is maybe a little bit complicated to understand, but I've got it attached to the distortion modes in here. So actually each of the filter has its own separate distortion mode. So I'm getting say second harmonic distortion on uh, this main one here. And then one of them has sine, one of them has um, say rectify or whatever. So you're getting a slightly different distortion on each uh, sort of filter sound. Then other than that, I've just got a pitch envelope here. And that's pretty much it. Uh, that's all that's gone into that. Then I've got another sort of example of the same thing here. So um, with this, if you do this with narrow bandpass filters, this sort of stacking filters on top of each other thing, you can sort of, you can sort of uh, create almost like a vocoder effect, like a really low resolution vocoder effect. So basically what I did is I created a format filter here by doing that same thing where I voice stack. So I've got five voices here in the voice stacking. And then I've got them uh, not spread out this time. This time I'm doing it manually. So I've attached this voice stack mod to the filter cutoff here. And then I'm uh, spreading the bandpass filters out. So we get like a format fil sound because that's basically how formants are made is you just... Um, you emphasize different frequencies in the frequency range and it kind of sounds like a formant. And then I'm using this envelope here to um, change their value over time. So you can see that here when I turn the sound on. So yeah, that's a cool sound that you can get by layering a bunch of filters on top of each other. I'm using these really narrow band pass filters. And uh, there's just some delay and some reverb on that. So there's no sort of additional form and filter work going on other than what's in the synth. And then finally, I've got an example of like a form of bass, which is using the exact same principle. It's just a different modulation. So uh, let's have a listen to that. So all that is, is the exact same thing. I've got uh, a bunch of these uh, really narrow bandpass filters on top of each other. I've got them selected at certain values with this voice stacking, and then I'm modulating them with this uh, envelope. So you get sort of a formant kind of modulated sound doing that. And um, that's pretty much it. Yeah, there's some saturation on that. There's some Go TT, um, which you can download once again, as I said on my channel. And uh, there's this, um, in here I've got mono low, which will mono the lows, and wider, which just widens it out with a blur. And uh, that's it. So, yeah, that's just an example of how you can use, um, how you can use voice stacking to create more advanced filters. Um, that's probably about it, I'd say. Um, I don't think there's anything else really to cover. If you have any additional questions, um, of things that weren't so clear. I know some of that was a bit complicated, but um, yeah, if you want me to cover anything else or you want me to go in more into detail about something that I spoke about, let me know and I'll do it. Um, big thank you to all of the Patreons, as usual, who have brought you this video, more so than me. And um, yeah, again, uh, if you are a patron of mine um, or a YouTube channel member or whatever, um, I'll be uploading this project file so you can play around with the presets if you would like. Um, thank you very much.